How Dennis Rodman never talked to Michael Jordan and Scottie Pippen. Now, as we all know, Dennis Rodman won three NBA titles with the Chicago Bulls. So I was playing alongside Michael Jordan and Scottie Pippen from 1995 till through 1998. But during an interview of In Depth with Graham Bensinger, Rodman talked about how he never spoke with MJ or Pippen during his time in the Chicago Bulls, outside of their interactions on the court. Uh, why not speak to your teammates then? Well, I didn't think it was important. I thought it was important for me to go there and win. You know, it, it wasn't, I don't have to have a job to speak to people. So I don't, don't <clears throat> man, Scott, we're, we're cool. Man, Scott, we're cool today. You know, we're a little older, we're a little wiser, but we're cool today. I mean, me and Scott never had a conversation. We never had a, me and Scott and Michael never had a conversation in three years in Chicago. Only time we had a conversation is on the court. But that was it. And nobody believes that. <laughs> now, how is that even possible? Not one conversation in three years? Crazy or is it? Now, obviously this statement came from Dennis Rodman. Whether you trust him or not, I haven't heard Pippen or Jordan deny it, but I do believe that they did have conversations, just very rarely, if ever. Obviously, Jordan and Pippen were close, but according to Dennis Rodman, he never spoke to them, which, I mean, it is surprising since they won three NBA championships, but is it that surprising when you break it down, which is what we're going to do in this video? There were two versions of Dennis Rodman, maybe even more than that, but we had the party animal Dennis Rodman, and we had the basketball player Dennis Rodman. Like, I'm not joking, watch his documentary, which it's amazing if you haven't watched it, because I'll leave a link in the description, watch his documentary. Anyway, the Dennis Rodman before he became the tattered, pierced, party animal Dennis Rodman played in Detroit during the late 80s, early 90s, when the Pistons were known as the Bad Boy Pistons. They were notoriously ruthless to players who drove in the paint and would repeatedly slam opposing players to the ground. They did it to almost every player, but especially to Michael Jordan, Scottie Pippen and the Chicago Bulls, simply because the Bulls were the young upcoming team who were eyeing the Eastern Conference Championship. As such, the Pistons were especially brutal to Scottie Pippen and Michael Jordan and would knock them around really, really hard, which is why I'm making this video, because as you can see, Rodman wasn't afraid to play hard. He would do whatever it took to win the game, and if it meant tackling an opponent to the ground or absolutely hammering them, well, he would simply do it. Very, very tough out there. Again, an unnecessary hit taken by the Pistons as Scottie Pippen was racked up. Again, I think that's what Phil is talking about. And that's what Michael Jordan is talking about. They just don't want to see that in our basketball game. He already had the guy beat to the basket. And then there was a real hard foul. A great backdoor play that the Bulls love to run. And they really let the guy have it. And then Rodman did push him. The thing is, during the 1980s and the 90s, the game was a lot different to the way it's played now. Players literally hated each other back then, especially the bad boy Pistons, which in reality is why Isaiah Thomas never made it to the Dream Team, but that's for another video. Anyway, as we all know, Jordan, Pippen and their coach Phil Jackson were all about winning. That was the only thing they cared about, and in good reason. To give a very brief summary, Jordan and his Bulls won three NBA championships from 1991 to 1993 and then he retired. Now whether Jordan retired because David Stern wanted him out of the league for his gambling controversy, or whether Jordan retired because he lost his desire to play basketball and the murder of his father made him want to play baseball, well, it's up for debate which one you choose, but nevertheless, he was out of the league and playing baseball. Then in 1995, as we all know, he returned with his famous quote, I'm back. He shocked the basketball world and that year the Bulls lost in the Eastern Conference Finals to the Magic with Shaquille O'Neal. So after that loss, this is where Dennis Rodman really comes into effect. Because by 1995, Dennis Rodman wasn't even playing for the Pistons. He was actually playing for the Spurs. By 1995, the Bulls were looking for a guy. They didn't know who that guy was just yet, but according to Phil Jackson, he made it clear what they needed. And I quote, If we're going to win a championship, we have to have someone who can fetch the ball. And after exploring every other opportunity, the Bulls management just kept coming to one player, Dennis Rodman. Now you have to remember at this point, 
Michael Jordan and Scottie Pippen didn't like Dennis Rodman. In fact, they hated pretty much, or not pretty much, they hated everyone that played on that bad boy Pistons team. The thing was, Dennis Rodman was literally the perfect guy for the Chicago Bulls. He was exactly what they wanted, and he hated playing in San Antonio, which he wanted out. The only thing was, the Bulls management said, he'd be the perfect guy, but only if our players would accept him. Now, as I mentioned before previously, you have to understand that Jordan and the Bulls were almost definitely not a fan of Dennis Rodman, but Jordan was one of those guys who simply would do anything to win. Literally, anything to win. He agreed to have Dennis Rodman on board. Then it was Scottie Pippen's turn. And I'll let Dennis Rodman discuss what happened here. One thing I, I said to myself, I said, wow, now I went to, went to Detroit now. And we pushed Scottie Pippen and uh, Michael Jordan around, and now I'm going up to play for these guys. <laughs> so, and I was just wondering how these guys going to take me. I went to Jerry Cross's house. Phil Jackson was there, Michael was there, Scotty was there. Phil Jackson got to the point, he said, Dennis, the first thing I want you to do is go over and apologize to Scottie Pippen. I'm like, what? So I went outside and we talked for five minutes and stuff like that. And Scotty said, it's okay. Everything is fine, man. Don't worry about it. So after Dennis Rodman and Scottie Pippen talked it over, Rodman would have to discuss his contract. And in typical Dennis Rodman fashion, he discussed it like a champ. I went back inside Phil Jackson and asked me, Dennis, would you like to be a Chicago Bull? I said, I don't give a damn if I'm here or not. That was my answer. And then Phil Jackson said, congratulations, Chicago Bull. Now, Dennis Rodman did what he did. He didn't care who he played with. He didn't care who he played for. As long as he knew what he was doing on the court, and the team just left him alone off the court. And that's exactly what the Chicago Bulls did. That's exactly how Jordan and Pippen never spoke to him, because he simply didn't want to be spoken to. All he wanted to do was party and play basketball. Jordan didn't care, Pippen didn't care, and Phil Jackson didn't care. Now, the reason why they didn't care was because Dennis Rodman just did his thing on the court. Dennis Rodman, while not disrupting the offense, did what he was asked to do rebound on both ends of the court, play furious in your jersey defense, and take care of the dirty work if you will. Now, Dennis Rodman, he would get 3 points, 20 rebounds, couple steals, a couple blocks. He just did what you wanted Dennis Rodman to do. Routinely, he guarded the best opposing big man, and routinely, he got the better of that matchup. Then, after the game, he'd go out and party, and no one would ever see him until the next game, where he'd do the same thing, get 3 points, 20 rebounds, couple steals, couple blocks, and he would do the same thing over and over and over again. The Bulls went 72 and 10 one season, and they won three championships in a row, and Rodman never spoke to anyone off the court. Something that I guess you wouldn't see nowadays, but in the 90s, it was a lot different to be honest with you, and we're talking about Dennis Rodman. He was crazy in a brilliant way. Lastly, I'm going to end it with a quote from Steve Kerr. For three years, our team really dealt with it well, Kerr said. Michael had this sort of quiet respect for Dennis. They rarely communicated, but Michael respected Dennis for the way he competed and rebounded. He knew how important he was to the team and left Dennis to do his own. Michael Jordan and Scottie Pippen were ready to do whatever it took to win. They hated Dennis Rodman, absolutely hated Dennis Rodman before he came to Chicago, and fair enough. But once he was in Chicago, playing for them, it was all respect. And it didn't matter if they spoke. It didn't matter if they liked each other. It was all about winning. So it's not hard to see how they didn't talk when you break it down. Because when you actually think about it, Jordan knew that without Dennis Rodman, he would not have six rings. I can almost guarantee you that. Just think about it. The amount of times that Dennis Rodman would get into Karl Malone's head in the NBA Finals, the amount of time Dennis would sacrifice his body to win a game is something that, well, you don't see very often, if at all. And, I mean, when you think about it, the Utah Jazz and the Chicago Bulls, they had some very, very close matchups. Jordan would hit a clutch shot, but without Rodman on that team, you wouldn't have a close matchup because Rodman was really that guy you wanted on your team. He would do the dirty work, and he was the best fit that the Chicago Bulls could have ever had. I personally wish that we could see more of this. You don't have to like each other off the court, but once you're on the court, you best believe that the other player has your back, just like Rodman did for Pippen and Jordan, and vice versa. They didn't have to talk off the court because they weren't friends, but on the court it was different. They would die for each other. They were teammates, and in Rodman's own words, they were the best teammates ever. They let him party as long as he played the way that they needed him to. And I hope you guys enjoyed the video. 
I just thought it'd be a pretty interesting video to make for those that didn't know about Dennis Rodman and what he sacrificed to play basketball. He didn't really talk to Michael Jordan or Scottie Pippen, but hey, it didn't matter. They won championships, and that's all that matters now. And he does things that, um, that are totally different than a lot of people, but when he steps on that basketball court, he gives 110%. Um, this is a new experience for, for Scottie and myself and for Phil and for other guys who have been on that championship team and faced it, uh, Dennis and, and James Edwards. But um, we, we put that aside to, to, for a common goal, which is to win a championship. And uh, I'm going to cheer them on as if they're my teammates, but yet I do that knowing that I've got a lot of scratches from those years. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe for more videos just like this and comment some of your own ideas that you'd like to see because, well, it can be to do with Dennis Roman, it can be to do with the current NBA, it can be to do with anything NBA related and I'll do it for you guys. But there is so much that you can talk about with Dennis Roman because he was, a, he, was, he was a crazy man, like crazy to say the least. And yeah, if you guys want to leave a like on this video, that would be absolutely amazing. Let's see if we can reach 4,000 likes for the next video and I'll catch you in my next one. Peace!